Before Daddy Yankee had more than 11.6 million followers on Twitter, more than 30 million followers on Facebook, 18.7 followers on Instagram, and 8 million subscribers on YouTube at the time of this recording. Eh, contento con, con el gran apoyo que, que todo el mundo me da, de verdad que bendecido. Before Yankee sold over 20 million records, earned the title of the king of reggaeton, and would find global success with his track Despacito. Pero cuando empezamos a ver el éxito, nosotros, wow. ¿Qué está pasando aquí? ¿Me entiendes lo que te quiero decir? Before becoming the most awarded Latin artist, nominated for over 50 different awards, including five Latin Grammys, two Billboards, and 13 Latin Billboard Awards. Los premios Billboard entregan con mucho orgullo el premio líder de la industria al único Daddy Yankee. Before releasing his most recent single, Dura, a song that in less than a month accumulated more than 67 million views on YouTube, Daddy Yankee is one of the most influential people in the world according to Time Magazine. Having worked in the music industry for over 25 years, he's responsible for popularizing reggaeton in English-speaking countries and becoming one of the most recognized Hispanic artists worldwide. On top of this, he's the most listened to Latin artist on Spotify with more than 45 million listeners per month on the app. And also thank you to all our brothers around the world who have embraced our culture. Uh, you guys definitely are part of it. Uh, we've been on this way for a long time. Now it feels good that the whole world get to surf with us. Muchas gracias, Spotify. Boss, jefe. <laughs> but before all the fame, Daddy Yankee didn't believe that he could make a career out of music and instead dreamt of being a baseball player. He almost made it big in America, landing a deal with the Seattle Mariners, but a tragic shooting and a bullet to his leg would change his destiny. What's going on guys? My name is Stella Nicole, filling in for Michael McCrudden, here for you on Before They Were Famous. A few weeks back, I did a video on Becky G, and you guys requested this one. Be sure to let us know who you want us to document next. Also, you can find me on my Instagram page at Stella Nicole with two eyes, and the link is down below. Let's get into this video. Daddy Yankee was born Ramon Luis Ayala Rodriguez in Rio Piedra, Puerto Rico on February 3rd, 1977. His parents are Ramon Ayala and Rosa Rodriguez. He has two younger brothers, Nomar and Melvin Ayala, who is also a singer. And although he's in the same genre as his older brother, he does something a little bit different since he makes religious reggaeton. Yeah, religious reggaeton is actually a thing. Ramon had a difficult childhood. On one hand, he was very focused on sports, including boxing, baseball, and basketball, which brought a lot of positivity into his life. But at home he was dealing with a father who was addicted to alcohol and drugs. He also lived in a difficult neighborhood and witnessed things that kids at his age shouldn't have to see. He worked from a very young age, handing out newspapers and packing shelves in supermarkets, allowing him to scrape together some spending money. As a kid, he wanted to be a professional baseball player but would dabble into music as a hobby. In fact, it would be his father who would influence him musically. Despite his dad's addictions, he's a talented drummer and currently is part of a salsa orchestra. At the age of 13, young daddy Yankee would meet Pedro Gerardo Torellas, better known as DJ Palero, and with only a turntable and a microphone, he would begin to record some rhymes he had previously written. His earliest work was influenced strongly by rap. Soon Yankee would gain some attention for his ability to freestyle, but at the time he still thought his talent for music was just fun and games. When he was 17, he would have his first child with Miradis Gonzalez, with whom he would soon marry, and today they are still together. Their first daughter's name is Yamilet. Later on, the couple would have two other children named Yasai Elise and Jeremy. Thank you so much for that, okay. really needed that help. <laughs> His dream was to become a professional baseball player, and when he was 17 years old, he had the opportunity to be part of the US team, the Seattle Mariners. Just before he could sign the contract, his dreams came crashing down after being involved in a shootout where he took a bullet to his leg. Initially, the doctors wanted to amputate his leg because the damage was so severe. Thankfully, the bullet didn't touch any important nerves, so he was able to keep his leg. But the rehabilitation left him unable to walk for four months, and it would be a full year before he would regain his full mobility. Mis sueños se vieron tronchados en ese momento porque yo estoy en una cama, estoy en un hospital. Estoy ahí en cirugía, digo, ¿qué voy a hacer ahora? Looking back at this now, he sees it as a blessing in disguise, but at the time it was a huge setback. He had a baby on the way and he needed to bring home the bacon. With his deal with Seattle no longer on the table, it was time for him to focus all his time and energy on his talent for music. When he first started out, his book inspiration from hip hop, breakdance, and salsa music. By the early 90s, there was a reggae and American rap were becoming more popular in Puerto Rico, so Daddy Yankee got back to work with his old pal DJ Palero to mix reggae and hip hop together to form a new style of music. In 1992, an album of mixes dropped titles Palero 34 on their Daddy Yankee will be heard on the track Persígueme, no te detengas. In English, this roughly translates Chase Me, Don't Stop. 
1995, he released his first solo album, No Mercy, under the name of Yankee. Slowly but surely, his music was starting to get played not only in Puerto Rico but was making its way into the US. In 1997, he would collaborate with the rapper Nas on the song The Prophecy. He would release two compilation albums, El Cartel and El Cartel 2, which are considered some of the first records to feature only reggaeton music. Unfortunately, the world wasn't ready for Yankee's new style of music and he found little success outside of Puerto Rico. It was around this time that he decided to adopt his home name, Daddy Yankee. Now, if you think this name was a tip off the hat to the New York Yankees, you would be wrong. Daddy Yankee actually translates to Big Daddy, which is a commonly used word in Puerto Rico. It wouldn't be till 2002 that he would finally find some serious international success. His album, ElCangri.com, started playing regularly on US radio stations, particularly in New York and Miami. One of the most popular songs was Guayando, featuring Nicky Jam. He soon after founded El Cartel Records and would release Barrio Fino in 2004, hoping that reggaeton would take off in the US. It quickly became the first Latin album to reach 1 million sales in the US, and that is the number one album with the most platinum records of the decade. It's also Daddy Yankee was finally becoming a massive international star. Barrio Fino made it up to the top of several lists in Latin countries and started gaining some attention in parts of Europe. He picked up a Grammy Latino and several Billboard Awards. Now, if you're not a diehard reggaeton or Daddy Yankee fan, you'll probably still know a few songs on this album. Another popular song on this album is Lo Key Paso Paso. I know it's already clear that this was the album that catapulted him to fame, and soon enough, Daddy Yankee was signing agreements with Reebok, Pepsi, and Paramount Pictures. In 2005, Daddy Yankee would appear in the movie Vampiros in a small role that made him realize that he was actually enjoyed acting. Okay, this is not his best performance, but I mean a Latin American vampire movie doesn't seem right, so maybe we can blame the poor production and bad direction. In 2008, he would premiere his first movie called Talent o de Barro, working with Paramount Pictures. This time he had a leading role portraying a character who depicts how difficult it is to live in the poor streets of Hispanic America. <laughs> Daddy Yankee would create the Corazón Guerrero, an institution in which he supports ex convicts in order to help them reintegrate into society. Thanks to this altruistic activity, Harvard University named him Latino del Año in 2008. In Sorry, man. In the following years, other albums would come like El Cartel, The Big Boss, Mundial, and Prestige. In his album, we can find the song Limbo. His fame allowed to not only run his own label, but to branch off into owning and operating his own line of clothes, watches, perfumes. He was appeared in GTA 4, was part of the Los Vos Kids in the US. He also collaborated with Enrique Iglesias, Will I Am, Snoop Dogg, Louis Fonzi, Fergie, Nicky Jam, Don Omar, Pitbull, and much more. Y muchas gracias a los colegas que me han dado la oportunidad. De colaborar con ellos. Some people call him the big boss, others call him the king of reggaeton, but he is a worldwide known as Daddy Yankee, a singer, actor, producer, entrepreneur, musician, and creator that definitely revolutionized the world of music. As for the rest of the story, well, I'm gonna wrap this one up here because this is before they were famous. My name is Stella Nicole, and you can find me on my personal Instagram and YouTube channel. Actually, if you're a big fan of this video, Michael also runs a Spanish YouTube channel with half a million subscribers. More artists like Daddy Yankee have been featured over there, so if you speak Espanol, that's probably something you should check out. All right, bye guys. When he first started out his book inspiration from hip hop, breakdance, and salsa music. By the early 90s, there was a reggae and American rap were becoming more popular in Puerto Rico. So Daddy Yankee got we heard on the track. Persígueme, no te detengas.